This is a 1998 Minardi Formula One car. Now, though the team didn't perform that great in their season, being about three seconds off from Mika Hakkinen at McLaren and Michael Schumacher at Ferrari, not to mention only getting into the top 10 about five times. One thing I've always wanted to learn about is how is a Formula One car started? Now, obviously tech has massively improved since this car last ran in the championship over 20 years ago. But I thought it'd be interesting to see why it takes several hours for this car to get ready and why back in 1998, it even needed a laptop to eventually create this incredible V10 engine sound. And to find out that answer, we're going to go through the full process from start to finish, learning how this classic Formula One car would have been started back in 1998. The time scale from arriving at a venue to being on circuit varies on the car and depends on ambient temperature as well. If you've got a nice breeze, then they take longer, or it's a cold day, sort of one and a half to two and a half hours, depending on how complicated they are. Uh, yeah, so we preheat the engine because there's this bit of a myth that they are seized when they're cold, and they aren't, but they do wear a lot more when they're cold. So we preheat the systems, preheat up to temperature, so that when we start, you just do less damage, and then they end up just working in one operating window throughout the whole time. So the coolant that we use is quite similar to what you put in your car, and we just use a, a different ratio depending on the engine that we're running. And then, yeah, we have a preheat box that takes it from what we call a kettle, takes it out, heats it, you put it into the bottom of the water system in the radiator, and it flows around the, the whole system as it would do if the car was running. You just need to make sure it runs through both sides of the system and gets all, all the air out of the engine and the radiators both sides. You can't start the engine uh, until it's at 50 degrees minimum. Uh, we tend to start it above 60 if we can just to be on the safe side and you have to crank it a few times as well to get some oil circulation as well so you can get some temperature in the engine oil as well. Before we start the car we'll connect a hydraulics pack to the car basically to flush any air out that may be in the system. Air compresses and fluid doesn't so if you do have air in there you'll, you'll have an amount of compression in things so when things try and work they might not necessarily move because the air is just compressing. So we test all the systems, gearbox and throttles, clutches and go through all that system off without the car running. And we use that because the car doesn't have any hydraulic pressure when it's not running. The, the laptop is an old laptop running Windows 95. Can't run the software that the car needs, unfortunately, with a modern computer, it just won't do, do it. So you have to get an older laptop. You also can't have a, a laptop that's too fast because it will affect the readings from the car as well, just from being quicker than the car. So it gives you all your so engine temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, water pressure, all of that stuff, uh, all the hydraulic so everything's hydraulically controlled, the throttles, the gears, uh, the clutch is all hydraulic. So you can get pressures for all of those and temperatures. Engine is plastered in sensors everywhere that they needed them basically. They will report back to the ECU which ov overall controls everything which is then controlled by myself. Play with them and engine maps, all the injector timings, gear cuts, everything is, is customizable essentially. So essentially that's your communication to the car. Uh, also provides power to the car so you're not relying on the car's battery because it's very small. And then there is a joystick, a hand joystick which is for me to control the throttles basically so I don't have to sit in the car to, to rev it or to check anything. I will then move the throttles and Anything that's hydraulically controlled, I'll play about with to try and get any air out of the system, also make sure that they're all working okay. Yeah, obviously once you've fired up, the car's hot, so we have to wait for that to cool down a little bit so that we have enough time to get on circuit without the car getting too warm. And again, in the morning, we have to get it above a certain threshold with all the, all the temperatures so that we can start doing the first things, firing the car up and going through hydraulics and all that kind of stuff. The valves in this car all run on air, so we use compressed air bottles that sit in the car that we charge and they basically are there because they rev so highly. So a normal conventional valve spring doesn't work. We have to charge a bottle on the car and that's what runs when you're out on circuit and make sure you don't have any issues with valves. So the box that sits up on, on my shoulder basically is a fuel prime pack. So the they run on mechanical fuel pumps that only spin when the car is running again. So we use an off car rig that primes the fuel rail and then when it fires up, we can take that away and it will run on its own system. So when we've got the laptop connected um, for turning the car on, it's a case of we can do it externally off the pack, but there's a switch inside the car as well, which is just like an electronic master switch. Um, a bit like the keys you'd get in a, like a rally car or, or something like that, like the little red keys. Same sort of thing, it's all done electronically. And then once the car powers up, we use the off-car batteries to run it. And then when the car fires up, it runs on its own system. Yeah, so the final part of fire up really is the starter. So we use an external starter. Again, it's, it's a weight saving thing. Um, and it's just more efficient for the car for what we need to do on circuit. So again, yeah, we have a, a battery pack and a big off-board starter that goes in the gearbox um, and connects straight through in the, the lower shaft into the, into the crank and we just turn the engine from there. For that whole starter motor, we have a shaft that is splined that matches something inside the gearbox, and that turns the lower shaft in the gearbox, which then in turn turns the crankshaft. So once that spins over and gets to the same sort of revs of it, like you would in a road car, 
except we're just doing it all externally. Occasionally, obviously, we need to let everything settle down, so make sure that all our pressures are good, our temperatures are good, um, and that all that comes off the laptop. Once they're happy with the laptop, then we can disconnect everything um, and make our own circuit. If there are any issues, we'll just turn the car off and make sure that we've got no dramas, but it's always better to check than not. We would always go from the laptop first, because that's everything that's given our data. So we use the power to the car and everything that's coming to the car is coming through the umbilical cord. Once we're happy with that, we'll then try and start the car on its, on its own systems. And once it's up and running and happy on its systems, then we can disconnect the laptop.